Welcome back to Tiny Grimes Games, and I am here with part one of how to be successful at an... Welcome back to Tiny Grimes Games, and I am here with part one of how to be successful at a chain-bound tournament, or really any Archon-style event. Uh, part one is going to look at my particular deck here. This is Harley, Shielder of the Embanked Front, and I'm going to analyze my deck... Uh, and then part two, we'll be looking at how another deck matches up against this deck. Okay, so if you've looked or listened to my other content, I'm a pretty firm believer that there are four categories uh, that make a deck really strong. Category one is, can you control, steal, mess with your opponent's amber? Uh, category two is, can you control the board, preferably through board wipes and creatures? Sometimes you can get away with just creatures. You can usually get away with just board wipes if you can make enough amber, but you need to be able to control the board. Uh, category three is making amber outside of reaping with creatures. If you think you're going to win just by reaping with a lot of creatures and a lot of matchups, that is not going to happen. As you can see with this deck, if that's your plan, you're going to lose all your creatures and you are going to lose. And then step four, or the fourth category, is having a way to make a key outside of the key forging step with Key Charge or Chota Hazri or any number of ways that aren't quite as good. And the reason for me for this is more of a meta call. And that is with Shadows being in just about every single top tier deck, they will mess with your Amber. If you don't have a way to make that key, you may never make a key. And I don't have that in this deck. So that is a glaring weakness right out of the gate. Glaring. So let's let's start with that category. Making a key out of the Key Forge stage? No. No, I don't have that. And to be honest, that's why I haven't actually looked at this deck until just two days ago. I put it in my pile of probably three out of five decks, which means it's fine, but it's not really something you can bring to a competitive tournament. I've since went through all of my decks and said, you know what, maybe this is more of a four. Uh, and I think it's a pretty strong deck. Now, it does have one way to sort of make a key out of the key forging phase, and that is just by using Control of the Weak. Yeah, you don't get to cheat the system, but you can at least have one turn where you say, no, you don't get to bait and switch me, or uh, burn the stockpiles, or whatever you have, effervescent principle, because of course you've looked at their cards, you know what they're playing towards, and you can take that turn, know for 100% fact that at least one turn you get to make a key, okay, but it is weak in that regard. Uh, let's look at making amber. If you just plug this deck into, say, Burger Tokens, which is what I like to use as an analyzer or any other analyzer, you might get the impression that it just doesn't make much amber. It only has, actually, six cards that have amber built into them. So we have Relentless Whispers, uh, we have Silent Dagger, we have Control the Weak, Tendrils of Pain, a lot of cards that don't do it, Anger, anger and uh that's it and you might look at that and go wow dude that is not gonna work but that's pretty misleading actually because really nerve blast does it's unlikely um that they're not going to have any so that's really eight now with the two nerve blasts uh with dodger and this particular deck there's a good chance He's going to end up stealing you. Whatever. That's a little bit different. Urchin, though, comes in steals one. So that's really 9, 10. Uh, we could look at something like loot the bodies and say, almost assuredly in this particular deck where I'm going to have a big board state, that's going to make me one amber. That's 11. Uh, War Song says something similar. That's 12. We really have a pretty good deck, which is kind of interesting. And it's it's one of those things where you have to look at those analyzers and not just look at the raw stats and be like, cool, moving on. You really have to be careful and looking at your deck. Okay, so does it make amber? Sure. It's not an elite amber producing deck, but it's not bad. Now, probably my favorite category. Can you steal, control, mess with your opponent's amber? And the answer is yes. What I don't have, though, is the take five amber yes crush their face i don't have bait and switch i don't have burn the stockpiles i don't have like massive amber destroyers what i have is consistent annoying <laughs> uh stealing and controlling so we've got the two nerve blasts the relentless whispers two urchins 
in this particular deck, Dodger usually does work and Naughty the Thief because I have so many creatures on the board that unless you're wiping the board over and over and over, I have so many threats, so much going on, they're generally getting value, which normally in a heavy steel deck, I don't find to be the case. Oftentimes those cards do nothing. So it's kind of a, a nice opportunity to be able to do that. It also has stuff like Bumpsy, who comes in, they lose one. It has Crump, who you know comes in, and then he fights, and they lose him. And not only is it Crump on his own, having to live, you've got two Anger, so you can go Crump Anger, a Gengar Chieftain, again, Crump Gengar Chieftain. So those really are good opportunities to control Amber the turn they come out. And then you have two copies of Charette and Old Bruno. Now, I got to say, Capture in this particular meta is usually a feel-bad moment. When you capture a bunch of their Amber, this is how it normally works out. You're feeling good. You got a couple guys with captured Amber. They eventually go, uh, I'll say, untamed. I will play Lost in the Woods, return your two guys back to your hand, get six Amber. Uh, I'll get another Amber, and then I'll play Key Charge, and I win. And you go, oh, I thought I had it. Capture, why did you let me down? Uh, but what's cool about this deck is it's a little bit harder to pull that off. They really have to have that kind of combo to be able to do that because we're able to really control the board, and that's what I'll talk about next. So because we control the board so much, these characters are more useful, though you really have to look immediately at your opponent's Archon card and be thinking about, like, what is my plan? Uh, maybe they don't have a bunch of ways to bounce them. Maybe they only have the one, and you try to bait that out some other way. And once it's out, you know, whoosh, now I can go to town. Maybe they're thinking, I'm going to kill those guys with uh, ancient bears and other big creatures, and that's going to be my plan. And so then you realize, I just have to eliminate their board consistently, and then I will be safe playing these cards. And they won't be able to do that combo. So you just basically have to know and understand if you're playing say my deck, what your opponent's plan is to mess with you. Okay, last category. Does it control the board? And oh, does it. Two keys to dis, uh, two gateway to dis, and a coward's end. That is absurd. One of my favorite plays is to go first and just go, bam, key to dis. And they look at that and they go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if I play guys, they are dead. They'll just declare whatever the house they want, Wipe the board and play my guys. So do I hold the guys, thus clogging my hand? Do I play some of them to bait it, thus clogging my hand? It just puts them in a really tough bind. And sometimes people try to play around it from the start. And they're like, all right, I'll just play one guy. And then I play like three guys. And they're like, Ugh, I still don't want to play these three awesome guys. Maybe I'll just play two. And then I go like, Crump, Anger, Ganger Chieftain, wipe their board. And now I have like five dudes and they can never come back. So these cards are super powerful. And then in combination with the fact that I have all these awesome creatures that control the board, it makes it this absurd situation where if I ever am to lose the board, I have a million ways to wipe it. And then if I don't ever lose the board, well, that's just great. I'll just own it with creatures. It does put me in a weird spot, though, where I'm constantly discarding amazing mass removals. I know my opponents are probably like, what is this fool doing? But I know I have so many coming that it's just not worth keeping them all. It clogs your hand. Another really interesting thing that I have to be careful with this deck is having two keys to dis. It's really tempting to just throw them on the board and be like, I dare you to play creatures. But you really have to be careful when you're looking at your opponent's Archon to make sure they don't have ways to exploit that. Make sure they don't have a snack lifter like we have in this deck. Make sure they don't have something like Speed Sigil into Nexus to be able to just drop him in active and then activate your key to just and wipe your own board. So you need to be cognizant of that. But if you are, uh, it should be all right. Okay, so those are some ways to control the board. One of the most amazing ways <coughs> to control the board is just calling Brobnar. There are so many sick combos here, it's crazy. Between two Angers and Gengar Chieftain, you're constantly having these turns where you're like, I'll play Crump, then I'll Anger Crump, uh, and then I'll Ganger Chieftain Crump. And then what you can weave in there is War Drummer. I had a turn where I got to go, like I had a Crump already on the board, so I angered him, 
No, like I attacked with him. Ang- I think I angered. Then I war drummered. Then I was able to play Chieftain and Crump. It was like this crazy turn. And then, of course, Bumpsy being woven in there with War Drummer means one, uh, two that they lose instead of one. It's just like all these crazy ways to control their board without board wipes. This deck has such insane board control and such amazing amber control that it's really, really strong despite having some more minor weaknesses. Let's take a real quick look at some other things to be aware of with this deck. Uh, one thing to be aware of is you have Snack Lifter. So when you look at your opponent's Archon card, one of the first things I do is take note of what artifacts do they have. And then I say this, is there an artifact I have to take? Like, will this artifact beat me? If so, I kind of have to keep Snack Lifter for it. Hopefully the answer is no. Hopefully the answer is this is their strongest one. These other two would be worth taking. Pass on this one. It's just not worth it. And then I can try to balance when I want to play Snack Lifter. Uh, another card that is amazing, of course, is Toxin. Being able to reap and, and discard a card at random is amazing. For some reason, I didn't mention Pit Demon in my list of awesome steel cards, along with Umbra. Uh, and then one of my favorite cards, Ember Imp. Now, Ember Imp is usually awful, right? Like, every deck I've seen Ember Imp, it's like, play Ember Imp, Ember Imp dies, cool. Uh, but what's really neat about this deck is since we have so much board control... Your Ember Imp will never die in combat, okay? So your opponent has to fit, has to have a way to destroy the Ember Imp outside of combat. Now, Nerve Blast, Nerve Blast, Relentless Whispers, all great ways to take care of the Ember Imp amongst a billion other ways. But what you can do is look at your opponent's Archon card, and let's say they only, for some reason, have two cards in the deck that would be able to handle Ember Imp. If that's the case, it might just be worth holding on to Ember Imp until the right moment. Now, it's going to be the rare Archon card where you see that and think that, but every now and then, I've had games where an Ember Imp just wins the game. Like, they just, you get board control, you plop down an Ember Imp, they look at you funny, they play two cards, the rest of the game had pass, and they cannot win. So that's an interesting one to try to figure out. Dominator Bobble is just amazing. Dominator Bobble really allows you to get these these games where, you know, you can put a... You capture three with Tourette, play an Ember Imp, play a Pit Demon, have a Dominator Bobble. Now you can just declare uh, this every turn and not even have to worry. You know your Dominator Bobble will let you use the other great cards you have. I think we've pretty much talked about all of them. Bottom line is, it's interesting for me that I looked at this deck and immediately thought, this is a three because it had a glaring weakness in not having Key Charge or Totohazri. It had another glaring weakness of just at a first glance, only making six amber. But upon really looking at it and digging into the synergies and combos, this deck might not just be good, but might be very, very good. So far undefeated at 5-0. I'll keep you posted on where it goes from here, and I'll put a link below to part two of this series in which I'm going to examine another deck's Archon card and how I look at it and make decisions about where I go. I'll see you next time. Tiny Grimes Games.